brain is the most metabolically sensitive organ in the body and it requires lots of energy lots of constant energy. The inducible nitric oxide is really a stress response for infection. So when we get an infection, things swell. Oftentimes, when it's chronically elevated, the individual has a chronic infection. What they found is that depression was directly related to um, too much nitric oxide in the system. They literally did studies where they were able to suppress nitric oxide and the depression went away. Most people that are suffering from depression are they're dealing with this whole endotoxin conversation that we were talking about. If we look at having chronic nitric oxide elevations, we might want to start getting concerned because when it mixes with lipids, you get peroxynitrates. And the research shows that this is the most dangerous chemical to our endothelium, to our heart, to our brain, to really, you know, a lot of tissues in our body, so it's very corrosive. A lot of people don't realize that when you get a cold, it starts in the nasal passage, and then it travels back, and that's where you kind of get that scratchy throat, mm. and it's dripping down, and then it drips down to the digestive tract, mm. then it starts to fester in your gut, and then it goes systemic, and then you're really sick. So if you can stop it, so there's a couple ways to stop it. One is, Dr. John Lawrence, welcome back to the Keto Camp Podcast. I think this is your sixth time, and this is at my brand new studio. You're the first person at this new studio, and it, I'm honored that it's you, my friend. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That, that's, what a great honor to be here. It's beautiful. Thank so you. It's like you've got such a great setup here, and it's beautiful. Thank I, you. I have your books back here, too, um, which is phenomenal. We'll talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we went to uh, Jim Quick's event for his new book. Yeah. And uh, it was super cool. Jim bought, brought you on stage and uh, acknowledged you and your work with him, helping him with his health along with uh, some other practitioners. But one of the things you shared that I'd like to start today with is the, the concept of taking care of your doorways in the morning. What exactly does that mean and how do you take care of those doorways? Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't particularly just in the morning. It's taking care of your doorways all the time. And so this... Um, this, this idea of taking care of your doorways kind of came from um, studying some Hindu where there's this god, uh, he's, he's represented as an elephant, right? And he's a very, within healing and health, like they, they you'll see Ganesh, right? This is the yeah. Hindu god. And um, a lot of times they'll say he's the remover of obstacles, mm. right? And so to be full, you know, to have the full expression of health, um, there's not that we need to have anything given to us. We just need to remove the interference to the expression of vitality and health because, you know, we're, we're self-healing, self-regulating, um, uh, machines, yeah. you know, right. So we have the ability to be healthy and we, 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 we run into disease because there's a loss of this vital force. And so, so Ganesh, um, the Lord of doorways. So a doorway would be, you know, a, a, an obstacle, right? And so if we remove that obstacle, we have something new and fresh and a new beginning. And so, um, as you know, I've been working with this, uh, cranial release where I use balloons and <clears throat> for anybody listening to this, this is going to sound really, really strange, but once you kind of start to get into it, it like makes so much sense. And you've done it on me. Yeah. So this endonasal cranial release, um, it expands it expands the nasal passage so that people can breathe better so anybody with like chronic nasal congestion or sleep apnea or snoring um you know any type of tmj or headaches or you know the stuff going around with the head this really helps quite a bit um and so in the process of working with this um, cranial work I, um, I was working with someone that was very into the the hindu um uh, philosophies and he was like oh this is very Ganesh mm. like you're opening the doorway and I'm like oh I like that yeah. right and so um so that's where I kind of started to to look at you know the doorways to the body and we have a lot of different doorways to the bodies and in some of their um, the scriptures within Hindu they they get into uh, a lot of this whole talk with doorways you know you've got the ears the eyes and there's even like different prayers that they do and there's different energies and characteristics of the different doorways we have in the body. But when I look at the three primary doorways, 
which is that that allow endotoxins to enter the body there's the nasal passage the mouth and the colon and we're if we think about we have this internal environment and then we have this external environment and where those two meet are where we have to defend ourselves from um, certain microbes like some microbes are good for us and some microbes aren't and if we have an over growth of certain microbial colonies they start to secrete something called an endotoxin and there another word for that is a lipopolysaccharide right lps and these are extremely inflammatory yeah. right and arguably they could be at the core of just about all diseases or at least contributing to it so it's it's a stressor that shuts down our life force because the cell danger response, I know you talk about this in your podcast and we've talked about it together, um, but the cell danger response, which is also called the Warburg effect, is such that um, the mitochondria within the cell is producing energy and it stops working. It just basically says, listen, I can't, I'm not gonna work in this environment. And that energy is then shifted out of the mitochondria and there's a very primitive way of making energy that's only about 10% as effective as what the mitochondria is, a very efficient way of making energy. And so when that switch happens, we have a diminishment of the, of the life force, of the cellular energy, the bioenergetics of the cell, the metabolism, right? And so when that happens, um, we, our immune system becomes um, uh, dysregulated or uh, minimize, which allows for other infections to, um, like Epstein Barr. I think this is like a big mm. problem for a lot of people. Is is a little bit of an over uh, growth of the Epstein Barr cytomegalovirus, HHV six. I mean, there's a whole line of herpes families that is very common. And these Candida. are all op and these are all opportunistic. Yeah. So that's the opportunity right there. You lower the life force essentially the mitochondria go, in, go into the CDR response, and now they're flourishing, is what you're saying. Right, right. And so Jim, Jim's ask was, what's your three top brain hacks, right? And so um, there was a couple of other clinicians that were sitting there that he was asking, and I knew there was going to be the, the, the normal, like, get better sleep. Get, and I, so I was looking at, like, okay, what could I bring you know, forth that would be a little bit different from what people normally hear? hear? And so the idea is that, the brain is the most metabolically sensitive organ in the body, and it requires lots of energy, lots of constant energy. And when that source is diminished throughout our whole body, it's those more sensitive tissues that become depleted and don't function. And so even within the brain, you can start looking at different structures that become um, like the inner ears, you know, as you know, we do a lot of work with, um, with a, a technique that we call Sunave. And so we're doing inner ear regeneration. And so this For things is like tinnitus and tinnitus, hearing, hearing loss mm -hmm. and, and hyperacusis. Mm -hmm. Um, these things have been become a lot more common after, you know, different jab injuries and, yeah. um, safe and effective and choices, co what we call COVID them. and, you know, yeah. a lot of these infections have, you know, had really bad impacts on the mitochondria and then you start to see diseases associated with poor mitochondrial function which inner ear so it's kind of the canary in the coal mine because mm -hmm. you're talking about an organ that requires a tremendous i mean it never stops even when you're sleeping your ear inner ear is constantly processing sound so there's um there's some really interesting mechanisms within the inner ear <clears throat> that require um, a constant source of like battery fuel to the hair cells. And as we get older, it's normal for us to lose that function and actually lose hair cells. And if we live long enough, I mean, it's just inevitable unless there's some sort of an intervention, like some of the, th the work that we're doing with the laser and with different stem cell injections into the ears, which is the Sunave process, you know, we're all going to be deaf, right? I mean, if we're going to extend our life to 200 years, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to be hearing much unless you do something, right? Especially how loud our environment is right now. You know, this is something I think um, I was, I met, so I went to Nazare, right? Um, you I know saw. this, right? So yeah. I went, it was like going to Disney with Mickey Mouse, right? So I went to Nazare 
with Garrett McNamara. Like cool. we flew together. And if anybody's watched the HBO special hundred foot wave, um, which if you haven't, they won six Emmys for season two. Wow. Um, just an amazing documentary about the largest surfable wave and how Garrett and, and CJ, um, you know, went out there and just and pioneered the, the fact that, Hey, you can surf these, they tow people in. So I went out there with Garrett and, um, and, and he towed me into, um, a 40 foot wave. Dude. Yeah. It was pretty epic. Explain more. Like what was the feeling of doing that? Like, well, how would you describe it? Um, you know, I, I was fairly calm, you know, mm. I, I, Garrett towed me in and, and I was in the back and holding the, um, the, uh, the rope and he was telling me, you know, he was coaching me on breathing and I was like, you know, I'm feeling pretty relaxed. I'm pretty okay. And, um, and, and he pulled me into two waves and the HBO was there filming. And so they, I was oh. able to get it captured. Oh, and I got the, I got the video. That's we can, cool. we can show it. Maybe we can clip that. Yeah. In yeah. Like. So Cameron, let's show that right now. So since we have the footage, check this out. Yeah. So, so he tows me into this wave and it was, it was really huge, but honestly, this is a tiny wave in the perspective of like big waves out there. What's the, what's considered a big wave for Garrett? Well, his, his record was 78 foot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Al almost double the 40 foot wave, yeah. 40 foot, 40 feet. It sounds so high to me. Yeah. 78. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It was pretty incredible. So there, but there was somebody that got like a, um, a 90 footer or something like really? that. Yeah. Same area. Yeah. Spain. Well, it's, it was Spain, right? It's, so there's, the, there's a, there's this, um, cavern or like this, this deep, you know, cavern that is bigger than the grand Canyon that comes almost right up by where the coast is. And so the swell, the way the swell comes in, it just like magnifies it right in front of this lighthouse. And it's just, incredible it's huge and it's it gets really clean too and it even barrels you know so his wow. garrett's big thing is he wants to get the barrel like he wants to get barreled on a hundred foot wave but he's you know he's he's about my age you know he's 53 54 and you know that becomes more and more dangerous yeah. the older you get but um I was, I had kind of transitioned the conversation about Nazare and there was a point and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to um, pick up a little bit of uh, what you shared already. You mentioned the brain being very uh, metabolically active. It right. has the highest concentration of the life force, the mitochondria. Right. And although it's about 2% of our body weight, it's about 20% of our energy production. Yeah. And uh, it uses 20% of energy production. And the mitochondria in general are 90% plus of our total body energy production. So you're making the point, you've made the point, the brain is so important to support. And you do some things with that um, technology with the ears. What are some other things we can do to support our mitochondria and the brain specifically? Yeah, um, well, we've bounced around a bit. So imagine that <laughs> we talked about the balloons. We talked about, so we we're talking about the doorways, the doorways, we're talking about endotoxins Endotoxins. so, you know, this whole idea of, um, this battle that we have with the outside world and the inside world and, and managing the amount of, um, toxic burden that the body has to deal with, which ultimately results in inflammation and it's the inflammation that causes that shift. So, you know, some of the strategies that we're using to um, take care of your doorways are, um, I'm a big fan of, of essential oils. Mm. And that's why we, we put a lot of the different essential oils in the um, glutostat nasal. We have a, a nasal um, mist that, um, that has uh, glutathione, NAC, um, uh, oregano, sage, clove leaf, bay leaf. And so it's all packaged in, in, in one and it's, really spicy yeah. right? but you can get 
um, lighter versions of it. I think we've got like a um, a junior version now oh, for do you? kids. Yeah, yeah. Cause I it, always take that with me when I travel. The regular version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, you know, the 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 doorways products um, really favor traveling safely mm-hmm. because your mouth is another another doorway that and and again between the the mouth and the nasal passage um, essential oils really work well because there's an antimicrobial effect but there's also a biofilm busting effect and so what people need to understand is that within that battle one of the 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 abilities that the microbes have is to shield themselves from your immune system with biofilm it's like this sticky kind of gelatinous material and so something to um, kind of clean that up and penetrate that and it's also like if anybody that's having a lot of sensitivities and allergies or um, um, mold concerns, if you think about taking care of your doorway, meaning your nose and your nasal passage, if you don't and you have biofilm, it's like this sticky gelatinous material that's not only something to bind. So if you've got particles in the air, they accumulate on this like sticky layer in your nose and then they are carried into your bloodstream, right? And What's, what's unfortunate is it's so closely related to your brain. And that's why I, it was such a big point for me to make last night at Jim's mm-hmm. um, book because there's, they're coming out with um, research now that suggests that between the mouth and the nasal passage that these endotoxins travel through um, a nerve plexus called the trigeminal nerve. And this is what innervates sensory to the eyes, to the nose, to the mouth, to the face. And that track um, ends up in an area in the brain stem called the pons. And within the pons, there's a little area that's called the locus cerulis. The blue area that you spoke the, about The before? blue spot. The blue spot. Yeah. And so the blue spot is like um, command central for norepinephrine. Mm. So this is the stress hormone, right? So when you wake up in the morning and you go from being like super sleepy and like un- practically unconscious to like alert and being able to focus and get things done, that's the difference between how much noradrenaline you have in your brain. So it's really important because we need to be able to get things done. However, what happens is a lot of people can't shut that down and they can't, you know, they can't slow that frequency of firing of that locus cerulis and we can talk about that a little bit more Mm -hmm. but the the point i'm making with the endotoxins and and the brain is that the scientists are finding that the accumulation of these beta amyloid plaques that lead to alzheimer's are are finding they're finding them in the locus cerulis before even stage one alzheimer's and then from there it goes to the hypothalamus and onto the brain and if you look at the locus cerulis and you look at the functions, it deals with mood, it has dopamine, mm. movement, um, memory. Um, um, there's, there, so there's all of the, all the constellation of symptoms are very interestingly like related to the, um, the challenges that the locus cerulis. And now I want to talk about metabolically sensitive um, tissues, right? Like we talked about the brain, it's like the brain needs a lot of energy. Well, the locus cerulis, boy, it needs a lot of energy so the amount of mitochondria in the locus cerulis is like kind of close to where the you know the substantia nigra i believe has like two million mm. mitochondria per cell it's crazy and you know i'd need to like look up to remember how many mitochondria are in the locus cerulis but it's like kind of up in that range to give you some perspective yeah. the heart has like four or five thousand yeah right it's the average cell like you know hundreds kind of like, yeah a few hundred mm-hmm. ovaries um have about 100,000. Hey, Keto Camper, I want to interrupt the video real quick to share with you what I believe is one of the most important nutrients that we should be taking every single day. Most people are deficient in this nutrient, and it's responsible for over 400 enzymatic activities in your body. And your body just doesn't make it, so it's required to be taken in a high-quality supplement or from high-quality foods. The problem with the food is that our soil is depleted, and it's hard to get this quality nutrient. So what is this nutrient? It's called magnesium. But I'm going to share something with you very fascinating. Check this out. Upgraded Formulas has this incredible product called Upgraded Magnesium. And Barton Scott, the developer of this product and company, he's a brilliant guy. He created nanoparticle magnesium. 
which has the ability to penetrate your membranes and go right into your cells. There's a 99.99 percentage absorption rate. Now, this is unheard of because with other magnesium products, you better believe it's not that high. And there's an interesting study they're doing with upgraded mag I want to share with you real quick. Early results from a sleep study with Dr. Sachin Patel showed that the average doctor in the group using this product has achieved an improvement of over 35% in deep sleep, more sleep studies than a double-blind controlled placebo study with upgraded magnesium is coming sooner. And you better believe those results are going to be super exciting. We already know this. Upgraded magnesium is easily the best supplement you can take for better sleep, including deep sleep, muscle aches, cramping, and any other signs of a magnesium deficiency, which is so common, unfortunately. What makes upgraded formulas unique, as I mentioned, is that it's a nanoparticle. This means it is absorbed very rapidly and efficiently by your blood cells. They produce a plasma-like version of minerals that the body recognizes and absorbs without digestion. And the results are phenomenal. I really believe just taking this for a couple of nights, you'll notice a big difference. So if you want to get upgraded formulas, upgraded mag, and any of their products. They also do some incredible hair mineral analysis tests to see your mineral imbalances and deficiencies, et cetera, and other incredible products that we've referenced before. Head over to upgradedformulas.com and use the coupon code KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. That is upgradedformulas.com. Coupon code is KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. I'm going to drop a link for you down below in the notes of this video. Okay, let's go back to this video. You know, what's interesting is that the cells that have the most mitochondria are not just the cells that are most metabolically active. That's true, but also the cells that are most needed for thriving and surviving for survival. And that is the body's uh, number one priority to survive. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense that I believe in God. God put the mitochondria within the cells that are most required for survival the brain, the eyes, the ovaries, the testicles, the heart, et cetera. And then you have other cells that have, you know, a few hundred that are not as important when it comes to survival. It's just so fascinating the way that we were designed. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It does. Somebody was kind of smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very smart. The creator of the universe. Yes. The all Thank you, God, Yes, for building you. this self-healing vessel that we live in, right? It's just remove the interference and let the innate intelligence do its job. So yeah. this right here is a big interference for so many people that are unaware that they have this going on. Right. Yeah. And you don't necessarily um, know that you have colonies growing in your nasal passage. You just might find that you have brain fog. Mm hmm. And um, so some simple strategies would be to, um, I mean, at the very simplest level, you could just get colloidal silver and start doing some sprays, but you're not going to get quite the biofilm, you know, busting cleaning. effect. Yeah. But you could mix some EDTA. We have a product called Marcon's mm -hmm. Great product. Uh, A and B. One of them's a probiotic nasal spray, and the other one is basically just that. It's colloidal silver with um, um, EDTA. EDTA is really good at, at breaking up biofilm. Should I? Uh, I'm st I just moved out of this place because of the mold, right? We had a lot of mold there, so I'm starting a mold protocol. Should I throw that into my mold protocol, the Marcons? What do you What do you suggest for me? I'm, I'm doing some strong binders and some body bio, butyric acid, and, and other products. But what What other things would you recommend for me for the mold protocol? Well, you know, I, as, if we're going to kind of stick to the nasal passage conversation, correct? Yes. Know, there, there, there's the possibility of doing the glutostat by itself, or there's the possibility of using the Marcons A and B um, and alternating those, or there's also the possibility of doing all of it. Yeah. And so I've in, I mean, for, for those that don't know, I still practice full time. Yeah. I have a full time clinic. So I'm in the trenches and I'm working every day with patients with chronic diseases and um, mold illness and autoimmune. And I mean, you name it. And, um, and so I'm able to see firsthand like what works. And that's one of the reasons that um, I really started to formulate a lot of these products in Mitozen is because these are things that I really needed you know, for myself and for my patients, things that really worked. Um, so uh, I've personally found the ease of just using the glutostat because the essential oils bust the biofilm 
just as good as you know the EDTA and the colloidal silver. You need to add that into the silver if it's just silver because there's not enough to kind of like break through that kind of scum the residue, the biofilm. Makes sense. Um, but there, there's not really like a wrong or wrong, right answer, uh, but it, it could be a, just a simpler protocol to just do something. And um, the, uh, the, the mouth, it's the same thing, you know, the, the Boca Zen, which is, you know, something that we, uh, we introduced, I don't know, maybe a, a year and a half ago or so. And it's basically got um, a number of fairly spicy oils. You know, we've got moringa, um, cinnamon, clove, um, oregano, there's ginger, there's fennel. Mm-hmm. It's you know, spicy. It, and it, it's not as spicy as it used to be. We, the first formula we had was like would burn your face I off. remember. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but this one's um, really, really nice. And so what we recommend is that, and, and listen, if anybody's listening to this and, you know, it, you don't have to necessarily use Mitozone products, right? But you, you kind of start to get the idea yeah, you're of listing the oils. You're, you make your own. It's, you correct. Know, you how, listed the ingredients, right? So yeah. you're, you're, there's different yeah, ways to do it. Yeah, the ingredients are there. So, um, but you place the, the oil in your mouth and with your tongue, you move the oil all around your gums. And you can do that several times a day. You can also um, allow the oil to kind of go back to your throat. And this is a great strategy if you, if you feel like you're starting to get sick. And a lot of people don't realize that when you get a cold, it starts in the nasal passage. Like you get inoculated in the, in the nasal passage and then it travels back. And that's where you kind of get that scratchy throat mm. and it's dripping down. And then it drips down to the digestive tract. Mm. Then it starts to fester in your gut and then it goes systemic and then you're really sick. So if you can stop it, so there's a couple ways to stop it. One is once it starts, you can just start taking like something like the, the glutostat or a colloidal silver, you know, better if you add a little bit of EDTA and you can get like powdered EDTA and sprinkle it in with some, some silver. It's not hard to make these things. Yeah. Um, but, um, um, but yeah, so uh, if you if you were to start getting sick, you could start spraying it like you know multiple times a day, and you can even nebulize these things, which we we have a diffuser, and and if it, especially if it's in the lungs, mm-hmm. um, and then as far as the the mouth is concerned, I would recommend if somebody's really looking to kind of either prevent getting sick or if they're starting to come down with something, you have these in the medicine cabinet. This is the first thing you start doing. You start taking the you know, the Boca Zen or your own concoction of essential oils into the mouth. Oregano is probably at the top of my list as far as one of the best um, ones to do. Let it get into your throat, kind of coat your throat. And then I also think that um, using a toothpick, you know, after you uh, put the oil in your mouth to kind of get it between in the gums. Or floss. Or floss. Yeah, Yeah. interesting. I, I also, after I brush and floss... I like to do the um, the oils. I like to do the Boca Zen, and then you know, because you're removing a lot of the biofilm in the mouth, and then you're get, you're letting the oil actually get into the tissues. And are these uh, things that we should do cyclically instead of chronically because of the antimicrobial, antibacterial effect? Is there a possibility if you're doing this every single day, you start to lose some of the good bacteria as well? Well, I, I, essential oils um, are very complementary. In, in the human body and there's you're not going to obliterate your microbiome you know with with essential oils but yeah that is a that is an argument that people will bring up as far as um when you're taking antimicrobials and i think that um that there's probably a happy medium where yeah. you know an individual might need to prevent getting sick and be taking a lot more than if they were to do that, like on a daily basis that they may jeopardize to some extent their microbiome. Correct. Yeah. I'm always a fan of doing things cyclically, right? So if I feel I have something coming on or I'm traveling, I'm going to do it more consistently in in a higher dosage. But if I'm not, I'll have some days where I don't do it personally. That works for me. Yeah. Question on mold has, um, mold manifests in many different symptoms, weird symptoms, right? Sinus infections, brain fog, et cetera. But one of the things I haven't figured out why this happens with mold is, is what happens with the eyes, right? You get like, uh, <clears throat> like these hot, some people have like the, the, to me, this happened to me, these hollow eyes 
that some people like Pomp, Dr. Pompo calls it like mold eyes, right? When I first met Pompo in 2018, he's like, dude, you have mold eyes. And I had mold in my home. So he was right. So do you know about that at all? Like why we see the hollowing of these eyes when people are exposed to mold? Well, the liver, when the liver's under stress, mm. it often shows up with that. And so this is this whole idea of, you know, it's the, the, the mold has toxins. It's the endotoxin from the mold that's we're reacting to and they're, they're fat soluble. And so the liver has to deal with that. Right. And you it goes through the whole bilary system through the, through the liver and the gallbladder. Yeah. And when that gets challenged and it starts to get inflamed because it's starting to deal with these toxins, you start to get backed up a bit. And when things get backed up, um, a hallmark, um, key, uh, clue of that is that you see some dark, dark circles that makes sense so if that is the the, the case if you live you have this hepatic biliary sludge coffee enemas phosphatidylcholine pushes doing some things to support the liver will help with that i imagine nac is good NAC, milk thistle milk thistle yeah i uh i want to transition um to another kind of controversial topic which we were just talking about offline which is this whole idea a debate between like methylene blue and the benefits of methylene blue and then we have the other side saying uh, the, there's benefits to taking nitric oxide. And there's kind of like the people who love nitric oxide despise methylene blue. And I'm kind of generalizing. And the people who love methylene blue are not really big fans of nitric oxide because they're kind of opposing things there. So I want to know, because you're big on methylene blue, and I, I love using it too cyclically. And you actually have seen positive results in your clinic, Advanced Rejuvenation in Sarasota, Florida with methylene blue. So I'd love for you to just like break down some of the confusion that my audience might have, because I just had Dr. Nathan Bryan on, the nitric oxide expert and researcher, and we love Nathan, he's great. But there's still confusion, because then we hear all the benefits of methylene blue, and it opposes the nitric oxide conversation. So I'd love to hear your input on this. Well, so there's, there's three forms of nitric oxide. There's endothelial, there's neuronal, and then there's inducible nitric oxide. And um, oftentimes when we're taking a lot of these supplements to elevate nitric oxide, it's more on the inducible nitric oxide, yes. right? And so you have that reaction where you have um, vasodilation, which is important because we're, a lot of us are in stress response situation. We have like too much sympathetic nervous system, right? So we have a contraction of our vasculature and um, having, that, um, having that relaxation can be beneficial. And so we'll see some clinical benefit with using that, like enhanced athletic performance, um, you know, erections, yeah, you know, sexual like performance, yeah. lower, um, lowering blood pressure. Yeah. The hands and feet might not be as cold and the, yeah. things like that. Um, but the, the inducible nitric oxide is really a stress response, um, for infections, right? So when we get an infection, things swell. And so this is, um, um, oftentimes, um, when it's chronically elevated, it, the individual has uh, a chronic infection. And so um, what they found is that um, depression was directly related to um, too much nitric oxide in the system. And they, they literally did studies where they were able to suppress nitric oxide and the depression went away. And my, my take on it is that most people that are suffering from depression or they're dealing with this whole endotoxin conversation that we were talking about. So it's like, again, we're kind of circling back to this battle between, you know, your internal terrain and what the microbes would want to be thriving in, right. And keeping that, all that to be, at bay. So, um, if, if we look at having chronic nitric oxide, um, elevations, we might want to start getting concerned because when it mixes with um, 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 lipids, with lipids, you get peroxynitrates, and and the research shows that this is the most um, dangerous chemical to our endothelium and to our heart, you know, to our brain, to really, you know, a lot of tissues in our body. So it's very corrosive. So there's definitely some um, some concern with just. Um, with just rushing in and just thinking you need to pound nitric oxide and that that's the answer. Um, I think that taking nitric oxide, like different supplements that enhance nitric oxide can be good to pulse prior to take, to doing different athletic activities, but to chronically take it, which is what a lot of, I think people either are, um, 
um, you know, are brought about to think that that's the right way to go is probably not a good idea. Is I think that that could possibly lead to heart attacks and strokes. Mm. Yeah, what I what, what I teach is uh, using it cyclically, personally, and also for my students. So that makes sense. So then let's talk about methylene blue. Um, why do you love methylene blue so much, and uh, what does it do for the mitochondria, this life force, and what have you seen clinically with it? Yeah. So um, I was introduced to Methylene Blue after listening to, um, it was a podcast with um, Francisco Gonzalez Lima. And, um, and it was a, not a very well-known podcast. It was before he started going on like Mercola and some of the other people a long time ago. And he was talking about using Methylene Blue as a photo biomodulation um, compound. Mm. And he was really into, you know, and he still is use, using um, different types of um, infrared and red lights in um, transcranial for enhancing the brain, right? Through enhancing the mitochondria with, with photons, right? So that's what the light carries. And they were doing a lot of studies where they were um, administering methylene blue along with these, um, these, uh, these light therapy sessions and seeing some dramatic improvements with people's cognitive abilities. And, um, and so it, it was like, this really sounds like there's, there's something to it. And so I've been really, um, really involved with utilizing it clinically and, um, using it myself personally. I found that, um, it, tends to be one of the best things for a chronic infection of anything I found. Mm. And when, you know, I've seen, I've, what I've seen it do with, with COVID is quite shocking. Like literally within a day, like dramatic changes. And a friend of mine whom I saw last night at the, uh, Dr. Bennett, um, and he, he did a study in Mexico where they were using, um, methylene blue with silver and silver and gold have a tendency to also help facilitate the photodynamic aspect, you know. So this whole concept, uh, maybe try to like bring this into more context for people. But within the mitochondria, the, 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 the mitochondria's job is to move electrons. So as it's moving electrons through this electron transport chain, it's producing heat. And that heat is then used to make ATP, which then fuels energy. However, that last fourth um, step, which is the fourth um, protein complex, complex four, they also call it the cytochrome, right? Cytochrome it, meaning cytocell and chrome meaning light. This, this step can take electrons and or it can take photons. Mm. So in other words, if you, shun, if you were able to get sunlight into your cells, your cells can actually take that photon and it go, can go into that whole electron transport chain and you can make energy from light, mm. which is pretty phenomenal. So yeah. that's one of the reasons that we need the sun. Yeah, really cool. So methylene blue absorbs red and it reflects blue. Mm. That's what makes it blue. Yeah. And because it absorbs red, and red is the one that penetrates the best of the body, right? So, I mean, if we, we could probably utilize other colors, but the problem is, is that when you look at the different spectrums of light, it's the, um, the red and near infrared pen actually penetrates through the skin. And most of the other lights are just completely absorbed within the skin. first millimeter of the skin, since that's why when we go to saunas, we're using red and near infrared, right? Um, and, and so because we can get that penetration and then we can utilize that, those red spectrums with methylene blue, we can actually get some pretty exciting changes where, um, the methylene blue has an affinity for the mitochondria and that's why they use it to stain like brain tissue. They, they use it, um, originally it was, it was a dye. That's why it's called methylene blue. It was a dye for clothing. And then they found that it was really beneficial to, to stain, um, tissues. And so you could see the different tissues very clearly because some tissues have more mitochondria than others. And so you could, you could see the differences. That's really cool. And then they were using it to stain different microbes and they could study the microbes to see what, um, within like developing drugs, mm. right? So that they could see if a microbe dies or not. Like, and 
So they would stain it blue and then they would add something to see does this antibiotic work against it. And so that they were, they started some studies on malaria and this is the late 1800s, Paul Ehrlich, right? And he won a Nobel prize because- Can you put the mic closer, like, tilt, tilt it like this? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So he won a Nobel prize because he discovered that methylene blue was a cure for malaria. And so he added the dye as he's preparing to like do these studies and then the parasite that, that carries malaria died. And they're like, wow. we, ha we have our cure. <laughs> and to this day, methylene blue is probably the best um, answer to malaria because it doesn't build tolerance. It doesn't build tolerance with viruses either. So um, a lot of the problems with antibiotics is that they, they, you develop resistant strains. Yeah. And then these resistant strains become superbugs. And that's the problem that we're dealing with right now is that there's all these different, that's what Marcon's is, mm. is it's this collect, um, coagulation. I mean, there's it, this collection of um, colonies that are antibiotic resistant. Interesting. And you, you uh, heard from you that that's where the name magic bullet came from, from actually methylene blue. Yeah, that the, the word magic bullet was coined for a substance that had far reaching benefits to the body, but left the body unharmed. Um, so it, it's, it, it has, so it has a mitochondrial boosting effect and that can be further enhanced with light. So it can be wonderful to do before you go into a sauna or have a day out on the boat or you're out in the sun. Um, and, um, you can use it like we, we recently introduced the, uh, the blue eyes. Yeah, that's right. right. Which is a methylene blue and there's gold and silver and there's a little EDTA, which helps to kind of carry it into the eyes. And I've been really enjoying doing that. We did it together did. with with a breathwork session with the sun gazing during yeah. my morning routine. Yeah. But you can also do it before you go in the sauna. And that that breathwork session at the Sentinel's so penthouse much, was so much epic. Fun. Yeah, so much yeah. fun. Let's talk. Let's talk about that. But before we get there, we'll definitely mention that. Uh, so the best usage of methylene blue is before sunlight exposure, sauna, red light therapy. And I've done it myself. You have the suppositories. Is it called Lumital Blue? Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've used your Lumital, Lumital Blue. What's the what's the dosage on that on one suppository? How much milligrams of melatonin? Well, we're not really we're not really recommending a suppository too much. Okay. With the methylene blue, we have the the bars, and the bars are either in a forty milligram, forty or milligrams, or one hundred and eighty milligrams. So you do that or some form of methylene blue before red light or sun exposure or sauna. And you're going you're gonna to notice a difference. I know that I do as well when I do it before my red light panels here. Um, so you could get all these products, by the way, that we're talking about that John has formulated, the mad scientist, and, and I say that in a very positive way, uh, mitozen.club uh, slash keto camp. Uh, and there's a coupon code keto camp for you to get a discount. We'll put that down below. There's also something else that's special in that club, which is not going to transition into our, our breathwork session, right? So you were here in Miami about a month ago, staying with the Sentners at this beautiful penthouse, and you invited me to come over in the morning so we could uh, sun gaze and watch the sunrise, do some breath work, do some of your new products, which I tried the drops. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm kind of a rookie when it comes to breath work, which is great because we recorded the whole session, and mm -hmm. you get a t the viewer gets a <laughs> viewpoint of somebody who's kind of a newbie to breath work, which is me, and then somebody who's more experienced, which is John, and, and you're guiding me through it. And we had so much fun. We filmed the whole thing. It's professionally edited. And share a little bit more about it. Yeah. Well, we used um, the, the, the breath honey. Yeah. That's one of the... So we kind of re recently um, introduced um, some products that really are breath work partners, and they enhance and magnify some of the um, benefits of breath work. And so... Breathwork, for those that may not have done it before, can bring about some very blissful um, feelings, like very calm, centered, present, relaxed, um, connected. Uh, it can be really beautiful to do um, with people, you know, and then afterwards sh sharing. You mm -hmm. know, it could That's be what like we did. A heart opener. Yeah, you know? exactly what we did. <clears throat> I find it to be incredible uh, to do each morning. You know, at the beach, grounding, watching the sun come up, um, but yeah, it can it can really reduce a lot of uh, stress, anxiety. Um, you know, the, the the chattering mind, it mm -hmm. really you know, quiets the mind. But it's very strengthening to the autonomic nervous system, which mm -hmm. is, I think, the most important thing. Is 
And it does that through the blue spot, the locus cirrus, which we were talking about before. Oh, interesting. Because you have your CO2 sensors. In, uh-huh. And so this is when you hold your breath and you get that like stress response, like, oh shit, I got to breathe. Well, that's because the locus cirrus is like starting to kick in and it's sending signals to the rest of your brain to release norepinephrine or noradrenaline. And, um, and then that kind of kicks in this fear response, you know, like I'm going to die if I don't breathe. Right. And we've all felt that mm-hmm. you're suffocating, you know, it's, it's terror. And, <clears throat> and so coming to terms with balancing that out and being more okay with higher levels of CO2 is a really interesting um, process, right? And that's where people that dive and do a lot of breath work and breath holding sessions, it's, it's, it's almost a part of that is just getting your, your blue spot more adapted to being able to tolerate more CO2. And CO2 is incredibly beneficial. Um, you know, I would almost argue that an approach looking more at CO2 versus nitric oxide might be, mm. um, a really interesting way to look at, at vasodilation and circulation because, um, nitric oxide, um, uh, it, it, we talked about vasodilates with CO2, um, does that quite a bit. And they've done studies where they've shown, um, incredible benefits to life extension and, and, and health and healing. There are even studies where people are, were injecting, um, CO2 into joints and into the body and seeing like tremendous healing. Um, there's the mole rat, right. That lives underneath. Um, Mm -hmm. I I don't know how deep, but this mole rat like lives within a very, very low oxygen level and a lot of CO2 and they really don't age. They live like incredibly long lives and their, their whole system is moving very slow, right? It's like the, the metabolism is slow. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that, you know, looking at, 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 at a system of health and healing through taking care of your locus cirrhosis and your blue spot and things like breath work and taking care of your doorways, you know, they're just not being talked about. Mm-hmm. The CO2, would it be sufficient to do a blo- to do blood work and look at your CO2 levels to get a good idea of your CO2 levels or would that not be that? You can, but it's a snapshot. It's a snapshot of yeah. that moment when you got the blood draw. Mm-hmm. Is there any other way to do it at more of continuous basis or at home? Um, well, there's monitors, you know. I'm CO2 monitors. Okay. I'm just curious personally. But you mentioned the autonomic nervous system and how important it is to regulate that and have a healthy balance of sympathetic, parasympathetic, and back and forth. I like looking at heart rate variability as a good gauge for that, right? So breath work is a free and easy way to get that um, a higher HRV. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're tracking H- HRV with an aura ring or something else and you have chronically low levels, doing something like breath work, especially with the sun rising in the morning, get the double benefits there, maybe taking methylene blue, that should increase your HRV. You should see some benefits from just doing that alone. Yeah. And the, the way it's doing that is that it's calming your, your sympathetics down mm-hmm. because most of our problem with that um, HRV, so if our heart rate variability, if we're not getting the variability, we're having a dominance to either the sympathetic or parasympathetic to one side. And it's usually sympathetic. It's uh, yeah, it's almost always sympathetic. We're like a stress response. And so anything that you can do to balance that out and support the parasympathetic nervous system, like high dose, you know, melatonin, as you know, I wrote a book on melatonin. We've done pod- a podcast on the melatonin. Yeah. Um, the, the melatonin is the primary supporter, hormone supporter for the parasympathetic nervous system, just like cortisol is the primary supporter to the sympathetic. Mm-hmm. But you also have the, the um, norepinephrine component. And when you wake up in the morning, it's actually norepinephrine that kicks, kicks in first. Mm-hmm. Then your adrenals kick out the, uh, the cortisol. Interesting. That's fascinating. So in your Mito club, mitozen.club slash keto camp, there's a library. What did you call it? The Mito library? Is that my Mito Brary. Mito Brary. Um, what's in the Mito Brary? We have our videos in there of uh, the breath work and different things. But what else is in your Mito Brary? So what we, we switched um, Mito Zen into a club-based uh, company. And so it's a members-based company. So it's a $10 lifetime membership fee. Yeah. And 
what this allows us to do is it, it's, it's so that people have the freedom to choose the health care that they want and to be educated. And the problem that we're running into in this world is that there's so much censorship and a lot of the, um, the rules and regulations that the FDA go by are driven by pharmaceutical companies that are lobbying these rules that really um, create a lot of um, challenges for you know, companies like, like us mm -hmm. to educate people, right? So um, we have a lot more um, educational videos in the mitobrary where we talk about um, you know, some of the ingredients and some of the research behind it, how, how to use different protocols on using the products, um, different testimonials. And we have like a, a number of breathwork sessions that we've, that I've done with different um, people. Like we've got a breathwork session with Garrett McNamara and oh, cool. CJ Macias out in this Nazare that we did one. Cool. And then you and I did one together. And, yeah. Um, so I'm, my mission is to, to, to do breathwork sessions with like the most interesting people and record it and let people have access to going and doing these breathwork sessions with us. So if you go, um, to, um, to, uh, to the page that you're going to have a to. Mito uh, Zen dot club slash keto camp. Yeah. You'll, you'll find, um, um, that, um, you'll enter the, the store and you'll be able to, um, Know, purchase whatever products that you'd like to purchase, but you'll have access to not only the mitobrary, but also um, there's events that I do. We we do events. In fact, we're doing one together December eighth. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Ben Greenfield yeah. and Mariel Hemingway, and um, we got a bunch of really cool people that are going to be joining us. We got the Admiral who was just on Admiral the podcast. We got Karen Martel. Yeah. yeah. The, the event is December 8th in Sarasota, Florida, um, which is a Friday, I believe. But, the, but, but I don't want to miss this point. Go ahead. We, we have these events that are also free to members. So that, that once, once we record them, you know, we might have them oh, that's cool. available for people to purchase for like a couple of months. But then after that, we put them basically for free to our members. That's really, I didn't know you did that. I think that's a brilliant idea. So earlier this year, I was a part of, I was uh, at one of these events where I got to speak and hang out. And uh, if you haven't been to Advanced Rejuvenation in Sarasota, Florida, it's an incredible center for healing. You know, it remind, I think of this, John, you walk into a hospital and that is not a healing environment. You see ran, uh, processed food being given to patients. You see fast food restaurants in there. Hospitals should be a healing environment, but unfortunately it's not. Your center is everything that we would want in a hospital. It's an, an absolute healing environment. It's a biohacking haven. Uh, there's so many biohacking tools and equipments. And then the fact that you do these events and bring people like Ben Greenfield is such like a huge influence in the health space. It's just phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, and it's an excuse to hang out in Sarasota, Florida, which is absolutely incredible. So this event is called Elements. It's taking place in December on December 8th. Mm -hmm. um, you've given my audience a 5% off coupon code for your tickets uh, with using the code Azadi, but I'll put the link for the event down below. Uh, this is what? How many events have you done so far at your new center? Oh, half a dozen. Half a dozen already. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to be great as a great way to kind of get inspired and kick off going into the new year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're we've got a great lineup, and when the way that we we do the events, it's a it's an intimate um, setting. So there's only about fifty seats, right? Yeah. So if if it's something you want to do live, you should jump Big action. on signing up right away. Um, but then we we stream it, so you know it, it would be able to stream it from home as well. But we, we do lectures and then we have breakout sessions where people can actually experience some of the things that we talk about. Yeah. And, you know, we, the, the clinic is 5,000 square feet. So we have the rooms set up with different devices and different um, experts that, that like provide one on one experiences with people, like with the photobiomodulation, with the different light therapies. We, um, we, 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 we allow people to sample the different methylene blue and we mm -hmm. have vibe vibroacoustic therapy and yeah like a uh, hyperbaric chamber i have it in the other room the in harmony yeah it's all that good stuff we're gonna have an amortal chamber there oh that's cool i yeah. haven't done that yet uh -huh. that's that's really cool yeah so i would love to see you there uh if you're watching and listening and you want to join us uh december 8th go get your ticket i have two final questions for you john uh the first one is we met 20 
20, I think it was. So we had a fun experience meeting each other at your house with through Dr. Pompa, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we told that story before. But um, the question is, first a comment, then a question. I've seen you grow so much ever since then. And it's been super cool because you've always been so dedicated to your craft. Uh, always been a student and a teacher and a student and a teacher and back and forth. And I'd love to see your growth, the impact, the connections you're making. And I'm proud of you, first of all, I want to say that. Thank you. But I also want to ask, what are you most proud about for yourself and what you've accomplished so far? I know it's just the beginning, but what are you proud of? You know, honestly, like what gives me the most warmth in my heart is the patience that I work with, you know, and, and, and hearing the changes and then... And, you know, we, we also get a lot of reports back from people that are using the products and seeing some some changes with that, like with the Zen spray. We didn't really yeah. talk about that. Yeah, we've spoken about it before, but I, I just did it right before we started here. But, you know, we've even heard a lot of people have some transformational experiences with using the Zen with and without breath work. And you'll have to, like, watch this video with with Ben and I doing breath work. And <laughs> we, we he, de- he uses the Zen, and, yeah. and so it can be quite a... Um, a journey, if you will, right? So like some people go and take ayahuasca and psilocybin and different like medicines, but like you can do this with breath work and the Zen adds a a dimension to it that can be very expansive. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, yeah, you know, the other thing that I feel really proud about is the community that I built with my staff, you know, at, and my team and, um, you know, every day I show up, you know, it's like, it's like this family and, you know, it's, it's, it's like humbling. Cause it's like, I kind of like, I created that and yeah. like these people love each other, you know, and it's very few environments that I've gone into with companies that had that type of warmth and caring. And this is what a lot of people, when they come to the clinic, they're just inevitably just consistently people will be like, you have the most incredible staff. Mm-hmm. Everybody's so happy. Everybody's so nice. And, um, and everybody is happy and they're all mission orientated mm-hmm. and, uh, it, it's, it's been, um, I'm very proud that I've been able to attract that into my life and into my business. It's a blessing. It's a big blessing. Yeah. Your staff is great. Your team is great. Tara and everybody else. I want to take a quick break from the video you're watching to share something with you that has made a big difference with my health and the thousands and thousands of students that I teach all across the world. Now, this is a unique device that has been shown to help with skin health, sore muscles, wrinkles, psoriasis, eczema, scoliosis, migraines, sleep issues, arthritis, acne, scar tissue, wound healing, relaxation, and also boost testosterone levels. What am I talking about? What is this miracle drug? Well, it's not a miracle drug. It's red light therapy. As you can see here, this is called photobiomodulation. And I use this red light therapy device every single day. Not only do I use it, my fiance uses it. Our dogs and cats love it. And the device I have here is from Bond Charge. Bond Charge has a different range of big panels, small panels, from affordable to ones that are a little bit more money, depending on how much you want. And I love this product. I feel so good. And it doesn't take a lot of time to get all these benefits. I simply take off my glasses, which is Bond Charge glasses, by the way, turn it on. And I have it running for 20 minutes once a day. And turn it on. And as you can see, I just leave it there on my desk as I work. 10, 20 minutes uh, per day will suffice. And it makes a big difference. You're going to notice a big improvement with your skin health and all the things we mentioned earlier in just a matter of weeks. So if you want to get your hands on this Bond Charge red light device or get their big panels, they also have panels that you could take on the go that are more affordable then head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp and use the coupon code keto camp to get 15% off your red light device. Or as a matter of fact, your entire order, any product you could get 15% off with that nice coupon code keto camp. So whether it's these bond charge blue light blocking glasses, their sauna blanket, or any of their awesome products, use that coupon code keto camp at checkout. We'll drop a link down below. Go check them out. They're awesome. And let's get back to today's video. Final question, which might tie into what you just said, is uh, about vitamin G, right? We're big believers in gratitude and the healing, uh, incredible benefits of vitamin G and what it does for the autonomic nervous system, what it does for the mitochondria, what essentially it does for everything we spoke about today and every health benefit we're seeking. So what are you grateful for right now, John? What is your vitamin G? 
Well, yeah, I just had an incredible experience with Jim Quick. We drove out to the farm and, you know, this, this the David and Layla Sentner, um, you know, we were there last night at the event, right? And I had met, um, I had met Jim Quick and I had known Layla and I just had this idea that the work that Jim was doing with the brain would just be so perfect to introduce into an educational system. And Layla Sentner has developed, you know, the Sentner Academies, uh, David and Layla. And these are just the most high end, like just holistic minded educational schools it's amazing. You know, anywhere. And so I wanted to put those two together and that's, they, I mean, they met for the first time, like right in front of me at, 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 the, at so they, they, um, he used their house on the water there, that mansion. Yeah. Right. And so I'm sitting in the audience and, um, and, 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 you know, Jim spoke to that and mm -hmm. he mentioned it and he, he like kind of gave some credit to like John put this together and it was like, I didn't expect that at all. So it, I have so much gratitude for being able to connect. That was probably one of the best connections I feel I've ever made because I believe that, um, there's a potential for Jim and the Sentners to create something at the school in education to teach kids how to learn mm -hmm. because they don't to learn how to learn, right? There's ways that you can approach taking in data and information and organizing it and learning faster and easier. And, you know, I, I, I probably have mentioned this in podcasts before, but I was in special education classes. Yeah. Grew up in Hawaii and it's I mean, lexic. it was pretty, pretty gnarly. Yeah. You know, it was very difficult. It, we didn't have that. So to be able to be involved in, in changing that in, in our current society gives me a lot of gratitude. It's really cool, bro. Really, really cool. Well, John, um, I love and appreciate you, dude. I'm glad we did this again in person. We're going to put all of your social media, everything we spoke about with the club and the event is found down below. And uh, we're going to do this again sometime soon because I know we're going to continue the conversation. So thank you for coming back, John. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Ben.